just reproducing all the steps. And one advantage is we can open the bone when we do an osteotomy, we can open the skin and see septum and all. We can cut the skin and see how things are going, which is which cannot be done in a normal in a live patient. It is actually it's a old uh, this one. Though soft and bulbed, it's a old body, so it's a bit hard. I'm starting the same incision, standard. Inside focus item, just check once. One more light here from other side. Otherwise, Hello? do you have any more light? Mm. the skin hook. Hello? Ramana? Hello? Yeah, uh, do you use any magnification to do this uh, dissection? Or, uh, uh, make I, I don't use, but it's better use uh, 2x or like regular R. We can use our hair transplant uh, loops also. Yeah, it's uh, good to use magnification because, you know, uh, the plane's better. So, uh, can you explain what you can damage if you're not careful in this area? This is cartilage, A medial, medial crura. Yeah, the medial crura can get transected accidentally. Uh, yes. Yeah, if you are a little we have to be in the a clean subdermal plane here, so that we don't injure medial crura. going to be tough and time consuming. Can you uh, please explain the subdermal plane? Is it you have fat on either sides on the skeleton and uh, the flap or is uh, uh, just subdermal? Normally there is not much fat in this area. Mm. We come across inter crural fat. Between medial crura we come across some fat. But even in thick skin individuals also, ah. we don't see much fat here. That is why we don't have a, a safety plane to do di dissection on that. So you just follow the medial crura and then you trace it upwards? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you also tell about this is uh, the area where you know you most likely to injure medial crura. Yeah. 
Can you talk about a bit on uh, infiltration, what you use in dilutions? Because the cadaver, I didn't use anything, no fluids. Yeah. Uh, normally, I use 2% xylocaine with adrenaline for regular procedure. Ready-made preparation. Some people make it one in. Uh, uh, wait, now the ready-made one is one in two lakhs. Yes. Good morning, sir. Ashutosh here. Good uh, morning, Ashutosh. Yeah. Sir, uh, you do all rhinoplasties subdermally up to teep level or in those cases where you want to do uh, defattening of the teep? Yes. In, in see, in this area, columnar area, uh, there is no, uh, like, you know, a difference in opinion of dissection. Everybody does in the same plane. It is subdermal. Uh -huh. When we reach tip, uh, I, I if I am dealing with a thin skin, okay. I try to be nearer to the peri perichondrium. So it is supra perichondrial. Yes, after practically, the practically. If you are not planning the defattening. Yes, if okay. I am planning the defattening and there is a extensive as a more fat, then I do it in a subdermal plane. Okay. Up to supra tip uh, or what level? Up to supra tip level, up to cartilage framework level. Okay. From there again, I'll go deep. Okay. Thank you, Reason sir. Reason being, if skin is, uh, there are, it's either you have to leave the uh, fibro fatty tissue to the cartilage skeleton or to the skin. You have to leave the tissue to one layer. I prefer to leave it on the fibro fatty uh, on the deeper plane, that means cartilage on the domes, so that uh, la later I can easily I'll get a counter to excise that. Yes. Pores, counter pores too. we have reached domes all looks white so uh, and fil if you can put the filter so that the camera so you have transected the pitangi ligament just about to you can still it's there you can see ah one second the superficial pitangi is gone this is I mean ah, the, deep, yeah. the deep is this there this is there yeah We can go on the sides without, uh, I'll, I'll show that. I'm not cutting that, but I'm going behind uh, the ligament. You can go on the other side also, behind the ligament. You can see um, yeah. this is intact, but I have skeletonized the dome nicely without detaching. Then I'll detach now. Here, uh, 
yesterday we were discussing the two ways of doing it. You can uh, just go like a tunnel or elevate laterally and then uh, cut the midline and then elevate flaps so that we can suture over the reconstructed framework. That, the, that is how we can, minor contour irregularities can be masked. But by just going like that also, it, it won't make much difference because we are leaving the whole tissue to the skin. Uh, I would like to explain you about uh, scroll ligament here. See, this is uh, the upper, I means proximal scroll. Scroll ligament has got two components. One is the vertical component and second one is a horizontal component. This is the horizontal component. This is a vertical component like. It's, it, it is located, it's, it's, uh, it connects proximal scroll of the lower lateral with the upper lateral cartilage. That is the only connection practically between the upper laterals and lower laterals. There is no other uh, uh, connection between upper lateral and lower lateral in normal anatomy other than uh, linings and all. This is the scroll ligament. It has, like I already told you this, this is a horizontal one. How we got a vertical component in scroll ligament is that that is the one which maintains the height of the tip. Normally, when we see Caucasian noses, at the end of surgery, they'll maintain a 5 mm height or 7 mm height, 3 mm height of the tip. Means like always a supra tip is a slightly lower than the tip. That is how they maintain that. That's why that is a natural uh, anatomical uh, angle. But in our patients, we don't have to practically leave that. That is decided by the thickness of the skin. If we keep uh, dome uh, higher, like measure 3-4 mm and then keep it higher, and skin is very thick, if you drape the skin back, then the whole tip will be bulky. That is why we have to, again, titrate with our uh, skin quality. If you have a very thin skin, then we can follow their principle. If you have a moderate skin, then to again. That. If you have a very thick skin, sometimes we may have to keep our tip uh, skeleton lower than the dorsum skeleton. Just to, it's like camouflaging the excess skin thickness. Leave this. Hello, uh, uh, Ramana, uh, mm -hmm. this is Dr. Hemant. This scroll ah, ligament, this does it anyway affect the internal valve in a thin uh, yes. upper lateral cartilage and... Uh, uh, regarding body. valve, uh. Uh, see the we anatomically septum has got a, a T structure on the top. It means septum becomes bulkier when we come up. That is practically, it is a T structure. We will see here that. And upper uh, lateral gets attached to the T structure. Scroll ligament does not have a, a role on the valve practically. Valve is the attachment of the upper lateral with the distal attachment of the upper lateral with the T junction of the septum, which maintains some space in the upper part. That is also on Indian noses, where we have a very roomy floor, it has a less uh, effect. Those noses, see, b based on the width of the nose, there is a classification, platyrhinus, mesorhinus, and acrorhinus. Platy is uh, a widest nose where we come across in Asians. Meso, uh, come across in Africans. Meso is Indian noses comes under mesorhinus. Camera local ke inka. Mesorhinus is Indian nose. 
And if you take a Turkish nose or a Caucasian nose, Russian nose, they are acrorhinus. Their base is very narrow. Acrorhinus uh, people will have more uh, valve issues than. That means they will. It's like pyramid, uh, a narrow pyramid uh, structure. So usually we also come across majority of the times the valve issue is mainly in patients from a tall pyramid. And with age, there is another problem. There is a Bernoulli's phenomenon. That means this the valve, lateral valves become weak and it sucks the, the whole structure in when they breathe in. Uh, can you explain? I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I have elevated. Uh, here, one more uh, step I would like to tell. When we reach a keystone area, if you have a sharp periosteum elevator, go laterally and then elevate the bone. Continue your supraperichondral plane into periosteal plane by going laterally. See, I'm, you can easily go laterally on both sides and connect both like that. That will, uh, Anil, this is a little angle. Head to door, I think, in our class, okay, and come back. It will be a touch. One second, no problem. We are just uh, focusing better. Ah, fine. I have reached a bony pyramid and degloving that part also. And again, we have yesterday discussed about uh, lateral degloving. See, when we do these, when we want to do osteotomy from inside, cutting of the bone and all, then you can see here, we can go laterally and then do the dissection. But when it is not required, there is no reason to go laterally and dissect it. So uh, your dissection also will depend on uh, what uh, steps we are going to. It need not be a standard, uh, a complete degloving of all the structure, sides, and then upper, lower. It's not required. Right? It's like when we don't want to do a dorsum work at all, only tip work, it is standard. We don't go beyond even this. We'll be just working on the tip and stop the uh, procedure there only. Now it is skeletonized. Uh, another uh, thing we were discussing about uh, spreaders and role of the spreaders. If you see the nose in the middle part, it is wider compared to the upper part. Again, when it goes down, it will be like thinner. This is the uh, upper lateral angle with the septum. And here I left the fat with this, with the skin. So this is the intradomal, again, ligament. So there are practically there are three ligaments. The one important one holding the both medial crura and the domes. And second one was uh, like both external and Pitanga ligament, a deep and superficial component, and then uh, scroll ligament. There is one more uh, described uh, uh, along the foot plate area. Now we'll, on the membrane septum, I keep telling that, see when I, this is the septal border, we do like that. This is the septal border from inside. 
and medial crora is much far in front of the septal border. Between that, this is the a membranous septum. Septum has got three parts, membranous, cartilage, and bone. Membranous is one behind that. We use that space for all the majority of the tip work. If we do a caudal extension graft, or uh, septal extension graft, or caudal strut, columellus, majority of the all these structures, when we want to lengthen the a short uh, length nose, what we use is this space, this medial, the membranous uh, septum. Like that. Mm. So carefully make a space in the membranous septum. And go to the septum on one side. Here I'll show you down. Uh, in this step, better use a, a knife to get the plane, subperichondrial plane. Another uh, easy method to get the plane is when we inject infiltration, go and hit the cartilage and then inject. See now I'm And you make double sure that we have elevated uh, the perichondrium or not. Make a cut, a just a partial. There is no perichondrium. It is been elevated. I'll make a space down so that the visibility is better. Then go with the speculum inside, elevate as backward as possible. If you are in a right plane, this step takes in a straight septum, it's like as good as harvesting a conchal cartilage only. It won't take much time. <coughs> when we have a septal deviation, then we have to go along the septum and then do all this. Now we'll hold it. And this step also, some it's like various ways of doing it. Some people use a sharp scissors and do the this one. Some people prefer knife. Here, flush with the septum. Uh, Venkat, before you ah. cut, uh, can you just show ah. the W ligament and what, as per you know. Uh, description so that if anybody I'm, wants I'm just to cutting on one side only uh -huh. so that we'll see the hmm. you get a resistance once you reach a bone when you are a cutting septum also somebody was asking me yesterday then how do we cut the septum backward, where do we have to stop that? 
then here also because if you are, if you are cutting the septum with scissors by leaving a L, we you, you get a resistance when you go down to the vomer, it's a bone, so you get resistance to the scissor. You stop there, then separate it from bone and extract the. This is the upper lateral. Now you can see the scroll uh, uh, structure. See, this comes like that, and then here they they both got attached. You can see here. This is the upper lateral, and then this is the proximal scroll. Always there is a infolding of the proximal scroll. That is why when we have to do a, a infolding, then it is carefully we have to separate the skin from there and then inside without tearing the inside skin then fold the scroll to strengthen the distal rim. Oh, no. In a, no. a deviated uh, septum there is a convex side and concave side. Mm -hmm. Do you have any choice of... Uh, uh, go on the convex side, it is easier. Con con uh, convex? Uh, yeah. Best is, anyway we have to elevate on both sides. Best yeah. is uh, finding this caudal uh, border. You can see this caudal border. Make a cut on the caudal border of the septum. Then you, we don't m make much mistake then uh, uh, you can go on both sides from there. See, I'm on the, again on the left side, other side. The, can you uh, uh. demonstrate the W point before you cut that? W point means the, the, uh, uh, the this one only, the, you, yeah. you mean this, uh, Exactly. A, yeah. a, a fold of the where upper the lateral. Upper lateral joins the where, septum. Ah, this, yeah. ah, this is. Mm. See here it is joining. I yeah. did not cut on this side. Yeah. Mm. I'm I'm just elevating inside. Mm. And elevate mucosa nicely here, uh, so that when we put it back then it it should be covered sir can Elevate you show the mm, mm. relation of the septal tip angle to short nose mm. long nose and how yeah. to modify that see uh, uh, i'll see the see valve is this practically The, this is the valve. See, lost, uh, here I have separated. You can see the this one. This side I haven't separated it. See, when we have to widen the valve means we have to make this valve, where is it like, make it wider. Thereby, again, mucosa will get covered and like we'll get a space in the upper part. And regarding graft, I'll, I'll cut this and then we'll go to that. Uh, extension, reduction in the length. See, again I'm flushing with this. Leave the cartilage, more cartilage to the upper lateral. In, in hump cases, if we have to do a, a spreader gra uh, f flap, then this is going to be much useful when you leave the T. In this case, we, if you can see that in this, see we have reached a keystone area on both sides. See there is a widening of this septum in the upper part. Compared to this area, this septum is slightly wider. Now, if, if, if say if you want a, I'll I'll show you how to uh, 
put a caudal strut in various positions. Is there? And how to shorten the length yeah, or how to the lengthen no, no. the nose? Uh, see, uh, see, consider this as a your cartilage piece. I have this cartilage piece. Okay, I I want to increase the tip projection. Then I. This is the level of the septum. This is the level. From profile view, you will be able to see that better. This is the level, consider that. I want a tip to be raised above the existing septum. That is what is uh, our tip projection means. We consider that the tip is not adequately projected. And I want a projection. That too, only forward projection. Length of the nose is fine. We want only forward projection. Then you put it at this level. Do not extend down. Reason being, we don't want length. We want only, I'm just separating more so that you can. Can we see it from profile view? Yeah, I'll show. Camera Motsum open jail, Anil. Undu, undu. Let him see. Give one needle. Small needle. Undu, undu. Are a needle on a bit. See, this is a cartilage graph we have. I am increasing the projection. No length. You can see here. This is the septal border. I'm not making my cartilage piece, which is attached to here, beyond, not beyond the septum, length point two. But in this angle, I'm increasing uh, beyond that. You can see that a uh, four mm, five mm. I think you can see it, no? Yes, sir. It's fine. Uh, th th this is the uh, septum border, and then this is for the tip. This is uh, anterior septal angle. We have raised this. 3 mm, 4 mm, you have to titrate also with the skin, with the domes you have, how much is required this. If we redrape the skin, he is going to have a, a projected anterior septal angle compared to what he has. Same thing, if we want a lengthening and also projection, then we have to put a graft beyond the septum. This is like an extension graft. We have extended, and also it is extended downward and also forward. If we put this, then it's going to be longer. This also, who are the limiting factors? The, the space you have, membrane septum, and then this one. If you see, if somebody wants to have a too much length, what is the problem? You are crossing uh, your uh, medial crura, and it's like, you know, he, he will not be able to close the skin. That is one problem. Second thing is, again, we have to titrate with the lateral elements also. One cannot have a too long columella, this, this, he, because there is no way that we can practically lengthen lateral walls. That means alar areas. So it, for that also, we may be like, you know, uh, in putting a rim graft, all these whatever soft tissue can take that much, the skin can take that much only, we can lengthen. This is a length, and, uh, length related. Septal extension graft, SEG, it's a standard thing. We, uh, and it's some people, uh, there's another doubt. We, uh, which side we have to put a septal extension graft? Because you are going to one side of the midline, no? By putting this, we are, your structure is one side of the midline. But if it normally a good cartilage, thin cartilage graft, is not going to produce any asymmetry, even we put on right or left. And invariably, the septum is slightly on one side, upper or lower part. Accordingly, you correct it and put. And in deviated nose, yes, which system. side? Deviated nose, you have to straighten that, and rather than placing this. If you want to, it means like without extraction, if you want to fix that. Sometimes we have like to in yesterday's uh, case, the only, uh, the caudal part is deviated much. Uh, so in that case. Uh, we have to make that weak and then put and then reinforce to okay. straighten that. Okay. Otherwise, if, for example, if it is like that, 
you want to extend that anyway obviously it is going to get extended in a wrong direction one side or other side okay now this is uh, something related to the tip and this medial uh, as like, like and a caudal uh, columellar strut see if i feel this the medial crura is very weak we put a small graft between two medial crura and then means it's a floating graft between the medial crura it is no way related to the studdiness of the tip because we are putting just to physical strengthening of the medial crura if i move like that the whole three i um, mean the one two and the graft i have placed all three units okay. will move we can't put a big tip a big uh, skin heavy skin on this with the hope that it is going to support it won't support the yep. for that we have to take a it is called a caudal strut the one which we if you want to put like that uh, so for example in benders cases we have seen yesterday that i have taken the support of the septum in one patient ans support like that this is the anterior uh, nasal spine area so columellar strut has to be also. free or it's added to the anterior nasal uh, spine columellar strut should be a free strut in majority of the literature okay caudal strut is the one which produces the strength to the tip it is just for the strengthening of the tip and the medial crura now i am almost on the anterior nasal spine area uh, ramana he ah. was here yes there are ah. uh, there is always a confusion in terminology no ah Can there is always yeah ah. there is, what is the difference between septal extension graft tongue in groove technique and columellar strut see uh, tongue in groove technique is not a graft actually that is the a technique we use uh, i'll 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 explain you i have separated this down to the anterior nasal spine now okay see tongue in, in tongue in groove technique consider the space between two medial crura is a groove and this is we wh when we want to pull our dome backward we took this backward take this backward and then fix with the anterior septal angle in that see normally septum won't come forward we are taking this structures backward if you put a septal extension graft forward then also you can it, uh, that, uh, in that way also we can it is a, again you say septum only that is a like you, uh, normally it is done for see if you have a, a a droopy nasal tip then lift the domes backward and then fix that is a basic tongue in groove technique it is mainly for projecting the tip and slightly it reduces the length also and septal extension graft is like caudal strut only if you put that you are extending beyond that and you are strengthening the existing septum along with that if you want more length we can use that and if anybody differs in this you and knows better can tell because i am telling what i know i am i don't say that i know everything because uh, there is a various uh, i have seen <coughs> daniel book describes columellar strut as a, a mobile structure just to maintain this caudal strut as that that is one of the Uh, uh like you know best book i come across in making the terminology simple roland daniel then we we harvest the septum now i'll show how to harvest the septum this 
this is the septal cartilage okay and i have separated uh, backward marking uh, i'll mark and do that okay how far backwards uh, have you dissected in this i have almost uh, reached posterior quina you can see that i have like passed almost beyond the beyond the bony septum okay hmm. see this is the sorry uh, now i'll can you also you explain can about the tunnels so that ah, for the new yeah, yeah. it will be see a tunnel is the one that uh, that is also there is a strange uh, it's a strange terminology uh, this is the anterior tunnel the one which we like you know upper part of the this is the anterior tunnel go along this if you go down down into the maxillary crest on both sides it is called a sup, uh, inferior tunnel a very few books describes the anterior tunnel as a superior tunnel it is al it's we read in ent as it's a anterior tunnel so okay. for the uh, juniors uh, the mucoperichondrium is anchored to the uh, uh, crest at that point isn't it ah, s s slightly you have to like uh, in that area you have to be a bit firm with that and elevate otherwise you go into a false plane there are two areas where you commonly get tears in a normal septum mm. in a deviated septum anywhere with buck with uh, in a buccal septum or a spars anywhere you may get that but in a normal septum bony cartilage junction is one area posteriorly where you may enter into a uh, super like tear the mucosa mucoperichondrium and along with that as the, what you said is right inferiorly when we are making the inferior tunnel not only because of that there it is spurs are very common along the floor that is also one reason why we get that so do you ah. use any sharp uh, tool sharp dissection in that area to divide it or ah. your you use, use a, yeah use a good uh, periosteum uh, perichondrium elevator that is sufficient good one is sufficient i'm see in the dorsum i am measuring uh consider this is uh, uh how much do we have to leave it ideally 10 mm ideally 10 mm front 10 mm back once i mark the area i'll turn the head I because it's a fixed head i can't turn the head in the because I'm just work not on the body, it's just only head specimen. See this? From here to here, it should be 10 mm. Again in that, it depends on the thickness of the cartilage. In some patients, the cartilage is very thick. You don't have to leave 10 mm in those patients. In some patients, it's very thin. So if we take, if we leave, 9, 10, they, there may be a slope or do, droop of the supra tip in those patients. So like, that is also like you will be, once you start dissecting, you will be able to uh, identify the thicker cartilage type, thinner cartilage type. So the, I have marked the L in that. Nice. Mm. The lower part, I, I, I made an incision here. I'm making an incision here, then, because already we have separated on the other side, there is less chances you injure the, say, cut the cartilage. From here, some people cut with scissors, some people cut with knife. I prefer to use uh, turbinectomy scissors for this purpose. See, I'm going, you can see that, going hand and then. I started cutting this, okay? This is what I was telling. When you're cutting, at one point, see, I'm nicely cutting with scissors easily. At one point, I get a resistance. See, there it's a hold. I'm un unable to cut there. If, unless until bone is also very thin in patients.
you can see it, I, I think, better. This is the cartilage. I'm going down. Going down and elevating. <coughs> Here again, there is some anterior spine area is very strong, right? And inside, separate it from the bone. You can separate with the blunt end of the periosteum. Then go down. Maxillary crest should be nicely harvested because maxillary crest uh, uh, cartilage is good in quantity. So when planning, um, um, yes, I'm um, just uh, yes, yes. Proceed. Uh, so when planning extra corporeal set. Uh, See this. I have taken one piece, and then. This is the floor one. So this floor one is broken into two pieces. This is the upper part. Okay. Then you can you see inside uh, uh, Anil? No, not oh, straight. One second. Uh, one second. Yeah. He'll put the camera well i want you to see the woomer and perpend and uh, perpendicular plate mm. ah perfect it's better no yes ah, what you are seeing is i'll take my instrument and ah i'm taking a periosteum say this is the uh, perpendicular plate of ethmoid this is woomer the lower part this is Omar. You can see it now. Yes? No. Still. Yeah, we can see it. Uh, this is the Omar. This is the area where you commonly find uh, deviations. Deviations. Where patient also will have a breathing difficulty when they have a, a floor deviation mainly because the air goes along the floor. So high deviations usually more of aesthetic and uh, low deviations more of functional. And there is no maxillary crest. It is a straight septum. That is why we don't have to go and do this. Like if we do a septum harvest means it is for the purpose of graft only in these patients. And you can see what is left here. It's a L is there. Okay, this is uh, the uh, perpendicular plate. How much of that can you uh, divide or resect if it's deviated? Uh, leave some uh, perpendicular plate. The idea is, uh, I don't uh, think it is in uh, MMs or anything. Uh, just uh, do, do leave one shelf like thing. Don't go high and this. And even if you do, uh, cut with a, s s this one, sharp thing, rather than ang uh, levering motion. See, there is two ways of removing that. When, see, I'm moving like that, okay? This is a perpendicular plate. You can see it, no? Yeah, we can see it. This, I'm moving. If I move two, three times, it gets broken. That is not right. Better always, see, I, if I want to cut and remove that, I'm going with a cutter, going there. We'll remove and what is left there, you can see. I have artery, ah, just. I've cut that and then you will be able to. 
see this I have removed this is a bone and only still there is some still left you can see no this edge this is the the top part yeah you can see that and the lower down the warmer uh, this is a tough structure either we can use a maxillary uh, this 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 is the commonly used uh, instrument for that purpose uh, this type of uh, gouge goose like thing can be used and we we can hit and remove because this will go and get engaged into that hit just for demonstration purpose i am breaking that and removing yes <coughs> see this is again omar but see whatever part we are removing no they are all straight in this patient because he has no septal bony or cartilage deviation now nose is practically septal part is empty behind and in the back there is a area where uh, we can do levering action on the floor and another important thing uh, when you are doing a cleft uh, nose rhinoplasty in a palate cleft patient earlier palate cleft was repaired and in this area you have to be careful don't go down and then fiddle with that because we may perforate the repaired palate remember that there is no there is a defect in the hard palate these are all the show this one once aha uh -huh, no what go see this these are all the uh, grafts like bone graft like cartilage graft from the septum so when planning extra corporeal so, uh, we can't remove like these pieces ah tell me all the small pieces are bone or yes, there yes. is some cartilage in that as well ye yeah, this is a bone yeah and uh, this is also a bone mm. and these are all cartilages this is a cartilage maxillary crest is always you know it has a some again a wider part which sits into the crest okay this is the cartilage this whole thing is cartilage big piece okay. uh, uh, if you have to measure this i this must be a 3 mm 3 cm approximately yes this is 3 uh, cm in length okay almost width is uh, again variable 1 to 1.5 cm so sir planning for uh, extra corporeal Mm. Uh, we should measure the septal length and the septum from the keystone area uh, before removing it, or just uh, we can try it with the uh, the splint with what we made to check that. Ah, it, you you can follow either either uh, making a template, place it on this one, and then you use your removed septum guide as a this indicator, okay. or one can measure also. but uh, but what i feel is whatever measurements you do after placing redraping the skin look at that whether it is a short long or uh, means like able to close uh, uh, how height is uh, maintained all these you have to like keep putting on so template is better uh -huh. now we uh, regarding uh, bone ऑफ <laughs> if you have to approximate bone and cartilage the needle won't pass to both it won't pass through the 
bone, no? we have to make a hole. You have to, you can just drill with the needle only, one, two sutures we can put. It's, it's like a sca uh, support scaffold. But uh, bones uh, tend to get resorbed. Nasal bone won't, calvarial nasal bone, they don't get resorbed. If we have a, uh, yesterday, uh, I mean, like I've shown you a video where we have decapped the hump. That bone can be used. But uh, septal bone, uh, septal cartilage, I mean, like septum bone is not much preferred graft. People use it, but they put septum in approximation. Like we were discussing about PDS plates. Use that as a plate and then put cartilage. Uh, now we'll see the anatomy of the upper lateral. See this upper lateral, you can see the, this is the bone. This is the nasal bone. Anil, lighter. Uh, let us see for some time. Later we'll, we can do one thing. We can split the nasal skin, whatever I'm de uh, like holding. Split that and see. But it won't, we don't enjoy that, that is why. This is a nasal bone, lower border, okay? This is a upper lateral is going down. Now we'll see how much and what angle it goes, okay? See, if you, uh, I want to tell you one thing. See, this is a attached at around 5, 6 mm, like that, okay? When you have to remove some minimal hump, you don't have to completely separate uh, upper lateral from the under surface of the nasal bone. A little separation is sufficient. If you have a huge hump and book cartilage is also more, then we may have to separate completely and then reconstruct with the central part. The See, I'm going like that. Now upper lateral is See, this upper lateral is there, but this is falling. The moment we separate it from, you can see now? Uh, no, the retraction needs to be slightly in the mid middle. Yeah. Yeah. This is right nasal bone, right upper lateral, yeah. okay? Yeah. This is the separated upper lateral from this. How is this now? I think you can see now. Now we can see. This is upper lateral line. And same thing can be like in the other side also, same uh, anatomy will be there. Uh, we can't see here. Anil? Now we can. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. This is again this upper lateral, okay? This is uh, also another concept which is important uh, when you are doing a ex uh, preservation rhinoplasty. You have to dissect up to here then do a direct uh, uh, osteotomy. <coughs> we'll see all those slowly, clearly. This whole lateral wall is separated. Okay. Then next. Uh, here we, now we'll see the <coughs> osteotomies inside uh, one. A median osteotomy, paramedian osteotomy. So that we can see it better when I separate uh, septum also from that. See this? This is the left nasal bone. This is the right nasal bone. And another important thing is, always uh, both nasal bones are not equal and uh, at same level. It is compensated by 
rest of the structure, cartilage, upper lateral goes under that and Sir, sometimes this keystone area is also deviated. Mm. Then how to correct that without breaking it? Yesterday we did that only. In our case, that keystone area is deviated only. We have to deal with keystone area when you there is a keystone area deviation. Okay, this one. Find the bone and then engage the osteotome. Okay? See, I'm. There are few PGs also in the group, in the, like, you know, delegates. See, this is the osteotome. Osteotome has got a bevel on both sides. And this is a chisel where there is a bevel on one side. You can see that. This is osteotome. This one is a chisel. And we see, I'm, I'm, I'm using osteotome to do a median osteotomy. Median osteotomy. Median osteotomy is practically is uh, splitting both the nasal bones, sutures between two nasal bones. I have to be, is totally in the midline to do a median osteotomy. I'm hitting, now, uh, keep hitting. Then the doubt is here, how long we, we go inside when you are doing a median osteotomy. Take good uh, osteotome, then, mm, keep hitting, see, I, I stop. I could see uh, when he's hitting, they could uh, feel the, this is, this is the left paramedian osteotomy. Hit, hit, but you get a resistance and you should tell your, depending on the hammer weight, hammer size, we should tell the assistant also to know that. A secret is assistant will also know that. It's like when you get a resistance, is like, you know, if he's hitting slowly, they'll come to know that. This is the left paramedian osteotomy. So where do you exactly um, engage the bone? Can you explain? At, at, uh, on the, uh, I have like separated cartilage to uh, slightly in the inner under surface of these structures, then I engage. No, I mean at the lateral uh, junction of the lateral wall of the bone and the roof at that point or slightly medial to that? Uh, uh, one side of the midline is the paramedian. Hmm. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, that is also important. See this osteotome, this is a two mm osteotome. This, uh, if you put more uh, this into that, take a, a narrowest osteotome and engage rightly. If we put more in the, the, this edge, consider, I'm showing here in this, consider this edge go in and this go edge is deeper, this edge is superficial. When I'm en engaging, this edge is deeper. So uh, this edge, try to put bit high. The upper one is like, because if you go, this one, if you put low, it will tear the mucosa you know, lining inside that again. So it will cause more bleeding. So if you have to really only keep cutting the bone, then you have to engage it slightly. I am again putting a, doing a right paramedian osteotum. Left is done. Uh. Mm. Should the paramedian osteotomy be vertical or slightly oblique, directed outwards? If we are planning to do a lateral osteotomy, then slightly go like that, obliquely. If you are planning to do 
a superior osteotomy also, it need not be deviated. We can do a straight one and then proceed. Because anyway, you are cutting that also in the upper part. Now, after doing these two osteotomy, uh, do the hit, hit. Hit, hit. Uh, after doing both the osteotomy, I have still some uh, like immobile bone in the middle part. That won't be there if we do a, a median osteotomy. Because now we, there is a part still there. If I don't want to reduce any hump, then I prefer to do this osteotomy because uh, that I want to maintain that and lateral walls have to be moved. And if you want to remove a minimal bone and then mobilize these two into that space, then you can remove this also. This piece can be removed. I'll remove that and Now we have done right and left paramedian. Then I'm just... Uh, removing a small piece of uh, nasal bone, which... Mm. Mm. No. We can use this wider one to flip it out. Uh. other one ah. I'll, I'll remove that bone and show you artery I have removed this middle part. This is the uh, middle part. Now we, we have done right paramedian and left paramedian. Then uh, this, this piece is removed. Now if you see this, there is a space formed between uh, both the segments. And level again, one second. Consider this as a level. Consider this as a inter cancellar interpupillary ring. Yeah, that is what we were discussing. This level is usual skull base level. Sometimes this may be uh, inner side, this skull base level may be slightly higher or same level or slightly lower also. That is the one use of uh, CT uh, paranasal sinus. When we are like, let me Studying the perinasal sinus CT scan, we have to always remember to see the level of the skull base. So either this is a, there is a classification I was telling, key rows one, two, three. Nowadays, radiologists will give in the report, if you see the CT scan, uh, key rows uh, two level, two type uh, uh, skull, uh, means the anterior cranial fossa. Uh, 
then we'll discuss about uh, osteotomies. Uh, here, the concept of osteotomy is um, normally we see high osteotomy, low osteotomy, high to low, low to high, high to high, like that. See, high is, this is high. Consider tip is the highest. Face is the lowest. Means if I am, if my osteotomy is, is this, this, this level osteotomy is higher than this level osteotomy. This is higher than this level. So high low is, you imagine the profile of the face or profile of the nose. Tip is the highest and uh, where nose joins the face is the lowest. Why I'm telling these things clearly, you know? Uh, I have like, you know, done maybe 50, 100 uh, rhinoplasties without knowing this. So I, this high, low is that. And another thing, low, low to low. Low to low means, see here, you are starting in the lowest part. I mean, for example, you are starting here, low. And go like that only, in the same plane. You don't go like that. See, this is uh, low to low. Because... Dr. Venkat? Uh, Dr. Venkat? Yes. Uh, can, you, can you cut the skin so it will be better understood? Uh, we will cut. Uh, what yeah. I want to do is, I will do an osteotomy, then cut. And see how okay. it has gone, one side. Okay? Okay. Uh, see, this is low to low. Low means, uh, the like, same level. Low. low to high means, see now, this is high, this is low. From here, I am going like that. Low to high. In this side, I think you are seeing better. See, this is uh, low to low. If I do like that, low to high, because I'm in the starting at lower point and going towards a higher point. Low to low, low to high. There is another uh, osteotomy. High means, see, I'm starting here, high, and going low, then high. If I do like that, this one. Why this is described is, uh, here there is a bony triangle called Webster Triangle. Webster Triangle, it is uh, a triangular a bone in the piriform aperture where if I start high, low, high, I can save this. I can uh, preserve this triangular bone. Advantage of that is, uh, the, the lateral valve won't fall into the nasal fossa with our osteotomy. So uh, people say that, preserve that, then go low to high. That is, uh, these are various. And uh, what is median we have done, midline. Paramedian is just one side of the midline. Median is uh, splitting, splitting the nasal bones. This is paramedian on both sides. And then, this is the superior osteotomy. Superior osteotomy, if you see these uh, Turkish surgeons and these uh, Europeans, very commonly they make a cut here and then cut the bone. Because their nasal bones and lateral walls are so big, we can't just by oblique movement, we can't connect that. That is why right, to precisely to connect both, they cut here. And nowadays, uh, piezo is the best instrument to cut that from inside, easily. Because they mark the area and this one. And same time, the risk is also there. We, it cuts bone only, but still we have to, skin may get burn when it touches the piezo while elevating and because you have to practically reach up to this level. Is there any so care for lacrimal apparatus? Uh, lacrimal uh, risk is there when you do low to low. This is located here. So when low and to when low is indicated and when low to high is indicated. When you want to move the whole uh, lateral wall in, if you feel that uh, the 
some in some patients we see this is very wide this part is very wide in those patients like you know there's a, we see that people come with a band like structure coming from nose to the cheek and there is a bone prominence is there then if you do that that will go this you have to do a, a low to low when we do a low to low and then do a paramedi and then you have a large la you have to definitely cut this also reason being you have lot of space here that is why what is a standard regular osteotomy done in uh, our noses means bones are uh, smaller is low to high osteotomy so that you are again making it oblique and paramedian oblique because practically these two osteotomies are coming like that joining in the upper part a little uh, strength can be like by pushing a, putting a pressure we can break that little area i'll do a later last chart me then cut and see bones see bones see he has a big nose but see the bone is so deep okay, i'm making a incision i think you can see it now clearly see again this is a turbinate inferior turbinate i am here and with scissors peel the bone and then cut then take a periosteum elevate both the, this is internal i am talking about internal osteum elevate the periosteum uh, externally then again uh, inner side also you can see that no uh, uh, this is the bone margin okay if you see the bone margin can you see that yeah we yeah we can see see that then uh, i i'm using the same instrument which i have shown you similar to the one which i have shown uh, a <laughs> this is a chisel bent chisel in this also there is a straight uh, uh, chisels are also available this is uh, to make your osteotomy oblique automatically if you, because it there, sorry there is a bend here this is wim silverman's chisel with guard skin side and this is right side one and can always uh, yeah. i'll can you explain about the webster's triangle in this area ah, this <coughs> is the this is the uh, area where the lateral wall touches the face periform aperture mm. where lateral wall touches the per, this one ah, now we do uh, that osteotomy that means high low high okay is it seen now yeah we can see now hmm. see i am starting in the high okay uh, no, no, we can't see now yes okay uh, see i i how do i say that i am starting high uh, uh, because i am leaving some bone lower to my osteotomy engaged area okay i am leaving some bone there i'll show, i'll mark the area with the ink okay see this is the bone this is the bone okay you can't see yes we can see ah mm. this is the bone in this full length for example consider this as 3 4 mm and i am leaving this lower part and in the middle of this full length bone i am engaging that means the lower part is is there ah high ah hit hit 
okay i go to sat just uh, the triangle is saved now my mo uh, osteotomy movement goes like that anil if you have to see my hand he has to change the focus ah uh. ah uh. You can now, split the skin and show as well, or either on one side, so that... Uh, we'll that side it. we'll split. The, after cutting this side, I'll split. Before that... Uh, okay, you... I, I have done this movement. Now the, I go like that. You know? Uh, uh, it. Uh. See, I've reached here. Yeah, this uh, again, you change the camera. Venkata Aditya here. Uh, uh, can you so show the top view? Uh, yeah, well that's better. Yeah. See, the, he, I can see the tip of my gorge here. Okay, uh, asked you about chisel. Little hit. Done. This is moved. Okay. Can you show inside how it looks like by just a gentle retraction? Uh, one second. First, first, you see this. Inside means in the area where I started or under the skin? Yes, yes, where Which? you started. Uh, look. There also you can see the mobility and the bone because I elevated more than normal live one. I'll mm. See this. You need to move your retractor lens. Yeah, that's better. You can see that this is yeah. bone is moving, no? Yeah, we can see that. Uh, now I'll do that. I'll I'll cut and elevate the skin, okay? I'll elevate here and see. Skin hook. Anil Manchika light it wet alapunu. So for the youngsters, how will you decide uh, what kind of osteotomies do you need and what are the things you look in before you plan your osteotomies? I'm reaching that area. Second, huh? leave it. We bring that camera here. This one. Uh. Mm. No, we like the bone lace for today. Here, here. Zoom, Jai Manchika. Anil, this is better. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. See, I cut here. Then, one second. Yeah.
you can see now, you know? This is the bone. It's the cut. Went like that, like that. Okay. Yeah, it, it can be seen very nicely, yes. So, Venkata, how do you decide what kind uh, of osteotomies do you, you undertake in a particular patient? Is there any guidelines for the youngsters to follow? Uh, 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 means like, see, it depends on the depends on the deformity. Mainly, we can't decide pre-decide and go for an osteotomy. When you uh, when we have a hump, uh, obviously we have to reduce the hump, break lateral walls, and move both uh, lateral walls nearer and uh, close the open roof. That is what we regularly do. It's in hump, anyway, the whole part is removed. Pr practically part of the nasal bones on both sides were removed in the hump. If we have a, the, always the question is, you have a normal height nose with wide bones, wide nasal bridge. In that patient, we have to mobilize the lateral walls. What I do is bilateral paramedian osteotomies remove a segment of the bone in the central part and break on both sides and move the uh, lateral walls. Thereby, that central part will give a space for the lateral walls to move. Right. If, if we don't do that, say we have done a median osteotomy, just splitting and then lateral wall breaking. Practically, we, it's uh, self-explanatory. How do we get, move these two? Again, it, this will spring back into its position because we are not fixing our op osteotomy site. Mm. It may not fall there. That is why I prefer to remove a, a, a little bone in the middle part and then mobilize both. And then uh, if we need a further augmentation, do over that to uh, make your nasal pyramid bit higher and look more defined. Because you have moved lateral walls, thereby narrowed this one, then space, place the, this one. So you put the graft over the... Or yes, the yes, yes. Uh, yeah. you, we can nicely put. Yeah. Uh, don't, uh, like earlier when we were, this one people used to tell that. We do the same on the other side. And we'll, I'll cut in the middle again. Okay, I'll cut and see the paramedian things. There is a, a request from the audience. Mm -hmm. Can you show the external lateral osteotomy from on the percutaneous on the left, uh, you know, mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. side? One second. Ah, percutaneously. Now I, I'll keep it like that only, then we'll do. Or you want me to do openly, open and show properly. Huh? What do you uh, want no, me no, to they do? Want to, they want to External see you. External percutaneous, so we see how it's uh -huh. done. I, 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 I just do that for demonstration sake. I, I don't do it regularly. Maybe in my lifetime, like I must have done two, three times maximum. I'll, I'll for that also, I'll tell you the Secret, you do the inside thing, means don't uh, c make a cut, identify the lateral osteotomy site from inside only. Finding the bone, where to start is easier to, you know, find from inside. So if you mark the area like that, see, this is the bone ending. See, this is the bone, okay? This, uh, you can see now, yeah. this is normally yeah. I would have made a, 
uh, or internal osteotomy cut, okay? If I, I, if I do lateral osteotomy, this is how I do, uh, this means external osteotomy. Now I know that this is the plot point. I, I put it here so that I know from outside I can feel that. Then make a, a nick. You better use that 11 number blade. Make a nick there so that you are directly corresponding to that. Both can be seen there. Till you go, it's a stab wound, go till you reach the bone. Once we find that, then small periosteum. Mm. For these actually, uh, I did not bring those instruments. There is a like, you know, perforated uh, uh, periosteum. See, now I am on the bone. Go slightly elevate uh, the periosteum inside. And, and these osteotomes are not useful for this. You need a, a, a little smaller one. Two or three millimeter. Yes. We have one, but it is like, take the smaller one and then you hit to, if it is very small, it will nicely go. Keep hitting and go. There is one uh, which is like, you know, we can make a groove there and then break the bone. The uh, pass in the same, uh, this one. And superiorly, again, you have to find the interpupillary line and then make a nick and error on the lower side rather than this is interpupillary line just below that. So, in an Indian skin, uh, these cuts would still show after some time. And the brown skin individuals do yes. not take, because when a patient comes for rhinoplasty in India, the first question they ask is, doctor, do you make any cut on the surface of the yes. nose or face? Yes. The moment we tell them their small cut, then that is, does that leave a scar or not, they ask. We can't assure small moles and these things also sometimes get hyperpigmented. And yes. So one has to be careful using the external osteotomy. Mm -hmm. In an Indian dark skin. Mm. Hit. And we, we can make one more cut also. Because it's a very sm uh, narrow instrument, then it's okay. Otherwise, you can make a very small cu uh, smaller cut and then... Step at this one. We can make one more here and then we make, we, uh, uh, I'm sure. This one and then when we are hitting this, we'll. Mm. They both get connected. But in live, I can't do like that. I'm worried. Okay, this is moved. Now we'll see this also. can see here this is pretty clean is it seen now yeah ni quite uh, yes. nicely seen
many of our ashti atom is if we open and see probably they are not exactly like you know lines are made in diagrams may not be going also if we like if we feel that there is a prominence or again you engage and then break it and uh, so and when we don't uh, skeletonize the bones then there is no risk of uh, fall of the area down otherwise uh, if we this skeletonize too much laterally this one when there is a comminution then bone piece may fall down. if we get that problem then maybe if it is seen on the table do a camouflage see to that disaster should not happen like injuring uh, uh, cranial fossa or like uh, orbit or uh, these things have to be taken care can you explain the important blood vessels in that area and how to avoid them uh, when you're doing the osteotomy external nasal vessel only and uh, along the nasolabial crease there is a vessel and we, we go with the bone most important is uh, that is why i was like telling that when you do a i'll show you this one this is what i wanted to show mm. when we elevate uh, scissors uh, see this anatomy this upper lateral this uh, lower lateral cartilage upper lateral cartilage attachment you can see here very nicely and here it is going into this so all these structures have got names actually if we have to whatever we are doing is not uh, anatomical dissection of the nose we are we are just discussing what is practical related to the rhinoplasty see this up, his upper lateral lower lateral is huge it goes oh, oh the lower it goes like that and then get attached to skin along the piriform aperture Ah. I'll, this is what I was showing. See, when I elevate the periosteum, see, you can see here. Ah. See, this is the bone. Okay. Elevate periosteum inner aspect and then outer aspect also. Go, like you know, you will see that grating sensation when your periosteum is going on the bone. Go like that till uh, as high as possible from inside only. that is how we when we do an uh, uh, like uh, engage an osteotome there is no way that you will injure uh, vessel because the externally there is no sharp thing in the periosteum you can see here uh, this th this is uh, blunt only this cannot uh, injure a vessel inside the mucosal side only the sharp thing is going that is why we have elevated mucosa inside also that is also very important otherwise whole lateral wall sometimes Uh, get torn into you know uh, and bleed bleed a lot otherwise uh, we rarely see a, you know hematoma like things or then excess bleeding or anything in the nasal labial crease or lateral aspect of the nose after osteotomy i we we have done another uh, dissection earlier maybe i think it's two months back to three months back i'll share that that is uh, recorded and uh, saved uh, a, a little editing was done and put it in the youtube it does not have a voice over and if i uh, will share that in the delegates group uh, you can say because it is uh, in the private mode in youtube you can just save the i mean see when if you have like you know whenever you have Madam has already time. shared it on the group i think ah uh, good that is uh, it, it, in that what we have done is we have taken conchal cartilage also some rib pieces then did a diced uh, cartilage fascia and placed because he had a low bridge we could do even that okay regarding scroll you all know that now see this is uh -huh. the 
No, it's width of the upper layer. Can, can lower you also uh, show the location of the turbinates in relation to the osteotomy, say, ah. so that people have an idea of how to proceed there? Mm -hmm. ah, see this. Uh, I'll come. Let me complete this. This is the uh, upper lateral, lower lateral width. You can see, when we do a scroll excision normally, here also it is important how much you leave. If skin is thick, uh, many times we don't have to leave too much. Only strengthening of the distal is sufficient. If we remove this, this type of, very, here it is very thick in this patient. If we remove that, and infolding is like, you know, dissecting from the under surface and then fold, and then put sutures. These are the standard domes, antiseptal angle. This is a turbinate, inferior turbinate. This is inferior turbinate. Here, you, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. It hold like that. Huh? Yeah, we can see this that. This is inferior turbinate. We can pass uh, a instrument just along the inferior turbinate without any worry. Because it's a, a sh shelf life structure. Uh, imagine a, sh a shelf on the wall. With three shelves, the lowest shelf is the widest, and then uh, middle shelf is uh, a bit b smaller, and the upper shelf is, uh, that is how a superior, inferior, and middle turbinates are located on the lateral wall. And this is the, now you can see better. Fine? This, yes. is, the, this is the turbinate. I'll, I'll, I'll do a turbinectomy, then you will understand that. Yeah, Normally okay. how they do is, mm. Mm, artery long, they, we can just crush, turbinate like that, wait for one, two minute. Wait for one, two minute and then I'll, I'll cut and again show this skin hook. See, I put a artery on the this one. Because piriform aperture is coming on the way, what we, what we can't even by dissect. See this, I have crushed the turbinate. This is just to reduce the bleeding. Now I'll cut and remove it. The front part is safer, nothing will happen, but posterior part is vascular. So when you are doing a, a turbinectomy, you should always have an endoscope. Now I'll pull out the turbinate. If it is detached completely, it will come. You can see now. This is the inferior turbinate. This is a huge structure. It has a bone in the middle. In this. Now you see roomy, uh, nasal cavity is very roomy. That is how turbinates, turbinectomy improves. There is a raw area along the lateral surface, in the place where it is removed. To prevent that, nowadays they don't, uh, even, in, even now this is most commonly done procedure, but few people does turbinoplasty and, okay. ENT people may be knowing better whoever is sitting there. Okay. Any more questions? W what is your take in, uh, on uh, physiology preservation of uh, turbinate and the choice? Uh, of I always of believe, uh, like, you know, preserve the turbinate. But in some patients where there is a chronic allergic rhinitis, which is uh, very prevalent, if you go to ENT outpatients, uh, 30 to 40 percent, or 25, 30 percent of the patients are allergic rhinitis. If I'm, uh, I'm right, May ENT yeah. guys yeah. who is practicing ENT there in the yeah. delegate, maybe yeah, knowing they all it, end up with septoplasty. Uh, 25, 30 percent patients in their OPR allergic rhinitis patients. 
they have a, a deviation component. Correcting the septal deviation will, mm -hmm. uh, will help them to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But uh, allergy is a medical illness. They have to use some sort of steroids or avoid allergy for lifetime. Mm -hmm. And the complications of allergy is polyps and all. These polypoid changes are there in the mucosa and both middle and inferior turbinates, that mucosa is also like because of the, these artery wind drops and all, they become uh, tough fibrotic and they don't uh, do the physiological function which they are supposed to do. When turbinate uh, stops doing its function, its normal physiological function, it is of no use. That is how the turbinectomy is started. At least uh, let the airway be roomy. That is the philosophy of turbinectomy. Uh, of the techniques, the turbinectomy, RF, uh, laser, etc. Uh, what is your choice generally? Now I, I, I get a turbinoplasty done in my rhinoplasty patients when they have a allergic symptoms, especially. When they don't have an allergy symptom, it is a compensatory hypertrophy of the turbinate. I do not uh, uh, recommend lateral wall surgery along with uh, rhinoplasty. And they can use medicines. If it doesn't respond, it can always be done at a later stage. Septorhinoplasty is done. Fest and all turbinectomy, they can consult their ENT and get this done. That is how I... But we have to tell the patient something. In allergic patients, you have to tell them. Otherwise, you have done one operation, they'll go, they'll go here and there, they'll tell that uh, some incomplete job is done, uh, that beauty is uh, taken care without uh, thinking about function and all. Those things will arise if you are not confident about physiology and explaining to the patient and convincing them before surgery. Okay. I think you can start uh, next session there. Uh, yeah, thank you, Venkata, once and again. Oh, I you. think a beautiful thank demonstration. Much, thank you for yeah. the beautiful demonstration, sir. Thank you. Uh, before we end this session, we have a professor of anatomy, Dr. Uh, Prajakta Ma'am from ESI. Uh, we request her to uh, explain about the soft embalming process because okay. mm. uh, uh, we're lucky to get the cadaver here for this uh, demonstration. Sir, uh, can I ask one, one last final question? Sir, uh, Venkatramma, sir, thank you for such an excellent demonstration. I just wanted to ask you, as a beginner, uh, as you said, uh, what are the things which we should not do, as a common mistake is said, uh, you should not cross the interpupillary line and all. Mm. What in your practice, what do you see, we must not do. And uh, like uh, uh, doing rhinoplasty cause a functional deformity or a problem to the patient. So, with your experience, you can show what are the no, common uh, mistakes that we generally... See, osteotomy mm -hmm. is... Uh, can you hear? Yeah, it is, uh, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, there is nothing we should avoid, maybe, because now it's like, you know, description. In West, I have seen one of the discharge summary from uh, a plastic surgeon from UK. They were like, you know, they, the whatever is explained to the patient is written in three pages before their rhinoplasty. The guy is from India and his uh, problem is thick skin. Uh, this, uh, I, have, I read one, two lines, uh, strange lines. The surgeon with the, in the consent like thing, they have written, the patient uh, gave a consent, allowed me to be more aggressive in bringing the result aggressive in, in the form of doing uh, osteotomies and excess thin skinning, uh, um, like uh, uh, skin thinning. Uh, and he consented for all these steps, like that A, B, C, D they have written. Uh, uh, like we usually tell, explain everything, but we don't write in the consent form. As like, uh, many of our patients also ask us to uh, doctor, do more also, no worry, we, be, be aggressive and try and bring the results. Aggressive in the sense, uh, thinning the more skin in bulbous noses and then uh, doing osteotomies, like you are like, you are doing a bigger procedure. So when they, there is always, when you are more aggressive, there you get result also and same time there is a risk that it, it, it may go wrong something like, um, 
whatever this uh, if you are not very much familiar with osteotomies if you do uh, two osteotomies on on each side to bring it even this one uh, some some uh, physiological uh, means functional or uh, you may land up in complication also so yeah, i think you have to titrate your uh, experience and patient's requirement accordingly there are some patients who will tell doctor bo don't touch the bone don't break bones just do whatever little i get i'm happy with that don't do any radical things that is how some patients that is how we have to discuss these things with the patients thoroughly and uh, keep improving our expertise and keep making small mistakes means the one which you can reverse reversible mistakes which we can afford to have and everybody does and keep doing and going ahead i think that is how we okay okay sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir um, ma'am uh, you can please uh, describe uh, good morning to all the delegates uh, myself dr prajakta professor in hod anatomy department uh, i would like to share our experience how we have started the soft embalming of cadavers and Organize, organizing the cadaveric workshops in our ESIC Medical College. Uh, now, the ESIC Medical College uh, got at uh, first batch in 2016. Uh, NMC has given permission. At that time, it was the Medical Council of India. And, uh, and uh, we all know that uh, the learning uh, tool for anatomy are the cadavers. And at that time, the cadavers were not uh, available. And we have uh, approached to state medical colleges in Telangana the Usmania Medical College, Gandhi Medical College, and any other, uh, the government medical college uh, uh, in the Telangana. But we did not get any cadaver for starting our first batch. Then uh, you know our ex-dean, uh, who is M. Srinivas, now working as uh, director, AIMS New Delhi. He was uh, a professor at, uh, of pediatric surgery in AIMS Delhi, and he got the cadavers from AIMS Delhi for the first batch in 2016. Then uh, we came to know that the getting cadaver in Telangana is very uh, hectic job and uh, easily we will not get because uh, there is no provision of getting unclaimed bodies from police for uh, research purpose or teaching purpose in medical colleges. So we had to depend upon the body donation only. And in, uh, after that, uh, we have started our own uh, body donation awareness cell in our department and uh, through which we are started starting getting the uh, body donations, voluntary body donations. And uh, in this way, we have started getting the cadavers for the teaching purposes. And in 2019, Mani Kumari Madam had uh, expressed uh, about uh, conducting the flap dissection course of the uh, flap dissection course of plastic surgery. Then uh, our ex dean, um, uh, Professor Srinivas, told that uh, uh, for that, we require soft embalming cadavers because uh, whatever the uh, cadavers we are giving for dissection purpose for the first MBBS students, they are uh, traditionally embalmed with formalin. And with that, the body became uh, hard and uh, even uh, non-elastic and all, but the, the preservation is for two, uh, uh, two years. That's why we use formalin and uh, easy for preservation also, we can keep just in tanks. And for two years, we can preserve the formalin embalmed cadavers. But uh, sir wanted uh, uh, soft embalmed cadavers for uh, this flap dissection course. Then uh, we started inquiring where this soft embalming uh, kit will be available or how can we start the soft embalming. Then we approached the AIMS Delhi people. Then we came to know about the Amrita Institute of Kochi where uh, they routinely do the soft embalming they ap we approached. But uh, they refused to give the fluid, but they have expressed us the, sol uh, the components, the ingredients. Uh, uh, to prepare the soft embalming fluid. So in that uh, two ingredients uh, components like potassium nitrate and uh, sodium nitrate, they told, but they are actually explosive and they are, uh, we did not get them easily from the market. So again, that idea uh, is dropped. And then we came to know that uh, Ramchandra Medical College in Chennai, uh, they are conducting one workshop on soft embalming. Then uh, our faculty and me went there and I had underground a training for the soft embalming. And uh, there they were giving the uh, soft embalming fluid, which uh, they are getting from uh, uh, Janillian Pharmaceuticals from uh, Coimbatore. And this uh, people, they are getting it from Australia, actually. The Australian, that is the Australian soft embalming fluid. And ready-made uh, fluid, which was available there. 
and the, we had undergone the training and then we got the fluid. And then we started collecting the cadavers because the short shortage of cadaver was an important uh, problem here. Then uh, we went uh, peripherally, uh, like Maharashtra and uh, Andhra Pradesh to get the cadavers. We got some cadavers from uh, Maharashtra and from Vijayawada for conducting this uh, flap dissection course. And then we injected uh, this soft embalming fluid in that. And then first uh, flap dissection course was conducted in August 2019 with four cadavers. And uh, we have uh, got the feedback from the delegates. And it was like uh, the, with this soft embalming technique, the cadavers are preserved, uh, the very soft there, and uh, colors are also maintained. Uh, unlike the formalin endam where uh, the cadavers become very hard, here uh, the texture was like lifelike, and even the preservation of the color was there. Even arteries and vein we could uh, recognize easily, the skin was elastic. And we got very good feedback from all plastic surgeons. And uh, at the same time, the Royal College of uh, Surgeon people were in our college. And they came to know about this workshop. And they have come to dissection hall to see this uh, uh, embalming technique and all. And they were also happy. And they also requested us to give uh, these cadavers uh, for uh, in the month of December for conducting the arthroscopy and arthroplasty workshop. So uh, like that, uh, the process has started, and we started getting requests from many branches. The surgical specialties like plastic surgery, then gastroenterology, the Royal College of uh, Surgeons, uh, surgeons uh, like uh, we have conducted the uh, breast carcinoma, uh, cancer flap dissection, uh, I think, uh, course uh, for the, them also. And then uh, gastroenterology, hepatic, hepatobiliary, and liver transplant and all like that uh, from 2019 we have conducted near about 15 cadaveric workshop with this soft embalming techniques and all the delegates uh, they gave very good feedback and uh, madam always uh, asked me whenever the cadavers are available let me know and we can conduct the flap dissection course like that we have conducted six flap dissection course in uh, of plastic surgery till now and uh, because uh, uh, Madam had told me uh, two, three months back she wanted one cadaver, but the cadaver was not available. That's why we had given the old cadaver only. That's why uh, this, the today's cadaver was not soft and uh, the color was also uh, not maintained like lifelike. Uh, it was preserved the three, four months back only. And uh, uh, this is how uh, we have started our uh, soft embalming process and the cadaveric workshop. And I'm... <laughs> Very happy that uh, uh, everybody says that anatomy is a dead subject. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, we anatomists are helpful for enhancing the surgical skills for uh, different uh, surgical specialties. And we are ready to conduct in future also this type of work, uh, workshop whenever we get requests from these surgical fac faculties. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>